Hello motor fans, I'm Carl with Aerotech along with my assistant Kyle. We're going to be showing you how to load a 20,480 newton second case today. We're going, normally this is a uh, eight grain case, but we're going to be loading it with seven longer grains. So before we begin, we always like you to check your liner. Look at both ends, make sure there's no cracks in the end. And then another thing, you try to pick the flushes in, and a way to check that, that looks pretty good there. You want the seal disc to sit flush. So we're going to begin by essentially cleaning the inside of the case with acetone. You want to remove any kind of mold release. This is to help with the bonding of the motor. Now Kyle earlier sanded the interior of this just to scratch it up a little bit to give some more at the area for adhesion. And we recommend Kyle's going to do this. It's uh, taking a damp cloth and wetting the inside of the motor because of course both Elder's Glue All Max and Gorilla Glue, you know, depend on some moisture to uh, aid in their curing. This motor is similar to our O motor, where we're actually pairing three grains together, or actually three sets of grains. So you have essentially three pairs. When you get the motor, it will already be inhibited on the grain ends. But we recommend when you assemble it by bonding in the grains with the Elmer's Glue Wall or Gorilla, you're also going to be mixing 30 minute epoxy and rebonding the grain ends as we insert them. And we provide both the Elmers, we'll be providing the 30 minute epoxy. Your grain set will come with O-rings, grain spacer O-rings, steel disc O-rings, both forward and aft O-rings. Typically your motor will come with a smoke but we are going to use a motor plug this time. It just aids in our cleanup of the motor after testing. So why don't we get started with the uh, forward grain. And I typically load from the nozzle end. I put the end that I plan to use for my seal disc forward already. So why don't you give me a little shot. This is, this is, you can do this by yourself, but it's pretty intense that way. It's easier if you have an assistant. So we're not really slopping a lot of glue on here. Watch for the dripping. Yeah, gotta watch the dripping. You didn't use your uh, butcher gonna, paper on the ground. We're gonna try to go clean. Go lean. You can get, put, put a little napkin on the rest on there. But essentially you're going to, without getting uh, glue all over, start putting the, the grains in. And I like to put them in a the twisting motion then we're going to take a grain spacer O-ring and just kind of make sure that it's flat against the grain. Okay. Because that's the forward O-ring, forward grain. That's the forward and, grain right. from the nozzle in. And the next is going to be a pair of grains glued together. Next will be the, the first pair, which is the A set. So essentially they'll be marked showing you A to A their, their normal sequence. You don't really have to get in a rush. The Elmers and Gorilla give you, you know, plenty of working time. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, slather this one up.
Okay. And then put some on the other. Just try not to get uh, glue inside the core, but for the most part in all our tests, uh, you can get quite a bit in there without causing any problems. So now you're going to place the grain through the aft end with the uninhibited end towards the top grain. Get ready. So we have enough glue. Yeah. Now you take the grain in that's inhibited and put against the other inhibited grain. spacer o-ring after this first pair right correct yeah. and now we're going to work on the big ring just put it on there I'll, I'll slide it right like i said we've already pre-inhibited them for you if you just want to get a, a coating on there just to ensure that they're not going to ignite when you uh, start the motor By this time, your gloves have caught a bit of glue on them, so when you rub it in, just make sure the whole surface is coated. Now this grain is going to go in with the uninhibited in first. Again, the inhibited end against the B inhibited end. Yeah. And now you are third grain spacer O ring on the second pair. coating the inhibited ends. Put a little more Elmer's on here. Okay, um, green number C. Uninhibited in against the uninhibited in. And push it against the wall. Okay, inhibited in against inhibited in C.
Okay, at this point, I'm going to take my gloves off. Put on another set. Okay, this is an important part to remember. After you push the nozzle grain in, you can set your depth with the flange, like that. But what's really important is you want to get as much of the glue off as possible. So I'm going to dry wipe it. And then I'm going to clean it with acetone. And the reason is, is we need to have one end of the, the liner casing combination open to allow gas, leak, gas leakage, which causes gases to flow on the outside of the liner, supporting the liner within the casing. If this was totally sealed off and there was an imperfection in the liner, the gas could expand, crack, and cause a burn through. This way we equalize the pressure, both inside and outside of the liner. So we'll clean it really good with acetone. And what I like to do is take grease, in this case the grease that we use, super lube, Grease the flange area of the nozzle. Liberally. And also the area that the flange is going to fit in. This way, if any glue does expand into this area, it will not bond the nozzle to the liner. Okay. Now we're going to take our casing liner and insert it into the motor. Go ahead and hold that tile and just leave it there. I'm going to take the forward closure. I like the grease, this area where the O-ring is going to seat. It just makes it easier to put it together. Normally, you would grease the forward end of this smoke grain liberally before you insert it into the uh, forward closure. But for our purposes, for test purposes, we're going to use this plug in place of the smoke. But always remember, before you put this in the closure, to liberally grease one end of it. You do not want that forward end to ignite. So Kyle, go ahead and uh, push this, pull this back out. And then uh, turn it around for me. I'm going to grease the seal disc O-ring. Put it onto the seal disc itself. I like to put a little grease around here. Helps with the insertion. Looks good. Can spin it. Relieve some of the uh, tension. Okay, now we're going to place it into the case and we're going to turn the uh, casing around. Okay, 
go ahead and push that in. And we're going to take our closure. Our ring's been inserted. Typically, I like the seat, the forward closure. Take our nozzle all right. Our closure. We're going to put the nozzle into the greased area of the flange. Push it forward. And seat your aft closure. These are pretty tight. You want to get, get the uh, strap wrench. We have uh, started cutting the liners slightly long, about a sixteenth of an inch. This helps support the seal disc. So you're possibly you might see a gap here. You can have a gap up to an eighth of an inch. Shouldn't be any issue. You want it at the nozzle end though. You want the seat, the forward closure. So as soon as Kyle gets back with the uh, strap wrench, we'll finish uh, tightening. I recommend if you buy a strap wrench, you buy a good one. Nothing worse than one that breaks. Gap is really tight in the motor. I recommend standing it upside down in a secure place. Preferably on a block of wood, you don't want to damage your nozzle. And let it cure overnight. Thank you, Carl. Welcome. And Kyle. Yeah, it was less than five. I was hoping for five.